Hey, what's up guys and Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Tom, welcome to this video, whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or maybe you listen to this on a podcast. And uh, we have a very special guest today, all the way from Austin, Texas. His name is Max, and welcome to Vancouver. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, just to give you guys a very quick intro, I actually met Max at Brand Dollar Summit that was hosted by Ryan Moran, and he was on stage giving a talk about branding. And one of my biggest takeaways from the entire conference was actually something that he said. And it was, I always had a hard time coming up with a brand story and I know how important it is to have a great brand story when it comes to a physical product business. However, my brand story about our company is we wanted to make money on Amazon and we found yeah. a product. What he said was, you don't have to have a brand story from your company's perspective, but you can know who your customers are and then form, form a brand story based on who your customers are. Then the next thing happens after is, well, who are my customers? As Amazon sellers, you and I know that we have absolutely no idea who our customers are except for their first name, last name, postal address. Unless you're going up to their door and knocking on the door and interviewing them, there's absolutely no way for you to find out who they are. So Max and I got in touch after the conference, I follow up with him and um, we ended up actually working together on finding out exactly who our customers are and how we can leverage that information for more product launches, for better marketing off of Amazon because that's something I'm really focusing on for 2019. And when it comes to marketing, you just have to have to know your, who your customers are. And as Amazon sellers, like I said, we're very bad at that. So um, Max is actually in town because as part of the uh, consultation, he actually, we have to do a live workshop and he already collected a bunch of data and tomorrow we're gonna go into a co-working space to actually go over all of his findings and that included him actually hopping on calls with our customers and doing surveys and going over everything. So uh, I thought it would be a great opportunity for, um, to bring Max on and do a very quick video for you guys and have him to just you know share with you guys how do you find out who your customers are and how do you leverage that information so max why don't you give everybody uh a very quick intro of you know who you are how yeah. you got into this space and um yeah cool um yeah well thanks for for the intro and uh you know i'm really really happy to be working with you and be up here in vancouver i think the session tomorrow is gonna be a lot of fun uh, but yeah so my company is called Brand Builder Strategy. Um, I work at this point with a lot of physical products brands um, who are in your exact same position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon is an amazing machine to start and build a business, to acquire cash flow, to launch products, and very quickly, you know, attain profitability and scale in that way. Um, but it is a terrible place um, to build a brand right off the bat, right? Because you don't know anything about who you're selling to, and, and all the all the things that you just talked about, right? Right. Um, and so my background is actually working uh, primarily with technology companies, media companies, um, also some larger e-commerce uh, companies in, in slightly different spaces than this. I got into this just kind of out of a sh stroke of luck. Um, you know, I was coming out of school. I had a background in doing research. My degree was in journalism, and I kind of fell into a small uh, branding consulting company. And it was just the perfect match between, okay, going out, talking to people, doing that research, either getting number, number-based data from surveys or going out and actually having conversations, sometimes face-to-face, -face, sometimes, you know, I go and do uh, tours of the US doing focus groups where I just have, you know, 10 people in a room and just talk to them in cities all over the country. Right. Um, and then I get on the phone or I do video interviews or whatever. And, and all of that is just a great way to get to know people and figure out like, who are these people, mm -hmm. right? Like, what do they care about? What are they trying to do? Um, and then take that information and, and kind of use that journalism background, right? And figure out like, okay, what are the messages that they need to hear to, to see themselves in this company, to see themselves in this brand, to feel like they're home right. when they get there. And so, you know, I through, you know, six, seven years of just doing a couple hundred of those types of products, I, or uh, projects, I, you know, got to the point where I was like, I kind of knew what the fuck I was doing. And, sorry, I don't know. No, no, yeah, no, no, no. Kind of knew what the fuck I was doing as, as far as branding goes. Um, but then I happened on this this physical product space, mm -hmm. and um, you know, one of Amazon in particular is fascinating to me just mm -hmm. from a brand guy perspective because you don't have any of that data, right? right. You don't have the customer data, you don't have those customer interactions. Um, but physical products in general is a really interesting space for me right now too, because all that money that I used to see going into tech, right, from acquisitions, from angel investors, from venture capital, uh, private equity, all that kind of stuff, is shifting 
over to physical products. Mm. Like you see that these gigantic old school, um, you know, multi-billion dollar companies that sell in the physical product space, they can't innovate fast enough, right? So how are they going to innovate? They're gonna acquire, right? Right. And you see that with RX Bar, you see that with Native, you see that with all of these, these brands that have sold for nine figure paydays on massive multiples, right? You never used to see numbers like that mm. in this space. It used to only happen in tech, right? And so that's kind of why I shifted my focus because you know, it's like tech's great. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. There's also a lot of bullshit. Most of those companies are not profitable and have no plans to be profitable and they're not run the way that you would run a business, right? I like that this space, mm -hmm. you know, it's built around profitable businesses. It's built around real businesses, right? Delivering real value to real people with things that you can see and feel. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I've been doing that. I work with Ryan Moran on a lot of his various projects, mm -hmm. I will say. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of how I got here. I can't remember the original question at this point. But, uh, yeah. yeah, that was I answered it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so uh, let's dive right into it. So like I said, when you are building a real e-commerce brand, you need to know your customers. And as Amazon sellers, we have absolutely no idea who's buying a product because at the end of the day, they're not our customers, they are Amazon's customers. So what Max is helping us do is to figure out who the hell has been buying our product? Mm -hmm. Why are they buying our product? Why do they choose our product over everybody else's? What are their like day to day look like? Like yeah. what what's their motivation? What's their yeah. desire? The emotional drive of these women or men? So maybe I'll just kind of give the mic to you and just talk about that. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to go back to one of the things you said at the beginning, right? And uh, and Tom's very good about talking about okay, I, I need a brand story, right? And I know that I need a brand story. I also know that you know because of what I sell and because of the type of business I'm in, that brand story can't necessarily come from me, mm -hmm. right? I think that it is a huge misconception that the brand story needs to come from you, mm -hmm. right? It can, it works really nicely if you are a member of the audience that you're selling to and you can you know, just jump into it and you have some really compelling story about how you overcame cancer or, you right. know, like met your long lost, you know, relative or whatever as a result of this, or, you know, like you're, that, that kind of, I think of it as like that scratch my own itch mm -hmm. story, right? It's a really easy one to tell and, and it works pretty well. So a lot of people feel like they need to have that story. but that really isn't the case at all. Like you can, your any type of brand story will work well, right? It's like, you, it just needs to resonate with your customers, mm -hmm. right? Your customers need to see themselves in the brand, right? Your customers at the end of the day, don't really give a shit about you or the products you sell, right? Really all they care about is themselves mm -hmm. and they might not phrase it that way, but they're going through life as the hero in their own story. Mm -hmm. So as long as you are selling a product to them, and you are telling a story that makes them feel heroic in their day-to-day -day life, right? They're gonna come back to you. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna form that relationship with you as a business, with you as a brand, mm. and and that's where all that that kind of goodness comes in. So I think it is a pretty common misconception that um, brand stories like need to come from the founder, mm. and like again, they can, but really, the only reason that that works at all is because you look like your customers. They don't really care about, about the founder at all, right? They just care that like, oh, I can see what this did for him or for her, mm -hmm. right? And I want to do the same thing for myself, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's really the, the angle that they're coming at it from. Um, but in terms of like understanding your customers and really figuring out who they are, like it needs to start with conversations. Mm. And I think about, you know, I talk to a lot of companies that really aren't, aren't at the stage that are ready to work with me yet. and the easiest way to do this is to change the way that you approach customer service conversations, mm. right? Because those are the first touch points you have. Those are the, like, yes, the focus in any sort of customer service exchange should always be like just blowing them away um, with the service and support that you're providing. Right. Because that's, that's a really strong kind of relationship point. But once you've done that, right? It's okay to continue that conversation. Mm. It's okay to follow up and ask a little bit more questions and say, "Hey, you know, I'm curious. Uh, you know, you you bought this product. Like, I'm I'm interested in and why. You know, what was it that drew you to this product? What right. was it like? Why'd you pick ours instead of someone else's? Right? Right. And like, it is not an expensive ask, especially if you've gone above and beyond in the initial customer service thing. They probably feel like they owe you a little bit, mm. even though you're they're your customer, mm -hmm. right? They're like, oh man, they gave me a refund, or oh oh man, they sent me another product for free, or whatever. Like. They just had a really good experience and you can ask them like, you know, pick two or three questions that you're really curious about that are going to shape some of the things that you do. Mm. Um, 
that, that can go to product development too. If you're thinking about new products to develop that are kind of in line, be like, hey, you know, we noticed that you bought this, you noticed that you bought this a couple times, like what's some other stuff that you'd like to see from us? Hmm. Kind of thing. And just starting that practice of learning more about your customer, right? Hmm. And doing that at every opportunity that you have can be a really strong way to just kind of get started bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. So you gave us a couple of really good questions. Yep. Um, maybe give us like, just like a couple more, like what are another, what's another example of like a good question that you can ask your customer? This one is a little bit tough to do in the context of the customer service mm -hmm. interaction, right? Because that you probably only get like one or two conversations. If you have someone that you, um, or one or two questions, right? In that conversation, mm -hmm. um, if you, have someone that you feel like you can get on the phone, mm. right? Then it becomes much more interesting. Mm. And then I want to understand like, what is this person trying to do with their life, mm. right? Like, I want to get to know, okay, you know, you, Tom, or you, you know, person X that I'm talking to, like, you have a story, right? You have a place that you're trying to get. You have a way that you see yourself that you're trying to present to the world, right? It's like, you know, asking questions around like, what motivates you, right? What, what are you trying to do here? Um, and, and how does this product play into that? Right. Um, so that's really the big question that I like to ask. It kind of depends on the category a little bit and, and what it is that you're selling on how you ask that and how you, how you get around that. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you this. Yeah. Is there a way, so a lot of people that I know who sell on Amazon, they sell a product because it makes them money. Yep. They don't sell a product because they are passionate about the product. Perfect example. Yep. I own a beauty company. I'm not passionate about beauty. Yep. Is it possible? But with beauty, I feel like it's still easier to come up with a brand story. Yep. But let's say if someone sells like a hammer yep. or like nails. Yeah. Is it possible to have a brand story for a very, very boring industrial product? Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's, and like, again, I'm just pulling this out of my ass. So don't like take this as gospel, right? In, in terms of like the story that I'm about to tell. Yeah. Right. But with a hammer, mm. right? If you just sell a hammer and you focus on like, hey, this is made of high grade steel or the head is made of high grade steel. It's this uh, type of weight. Uh, we did this with the handle, da, da, da. You're fucked. Like there's yeah. a million other people that sell hammers that are exactly the same, that are probably better than yours, that might be worse, but no one can tell the difference because it's just a hammer and as long as it can pound in a nail, mm -hmm. especially if you live in an apartment or something like that, you're not doing heavy duty construction work, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? But what does a hammer do? really right mm -hmm. you could say that it just pounds in a nail but it builds things mm -hmm. right you can build things with a hammer you can build a home with a hammer you can uh you can build a, a project with a hammer you can do all these things focusing on that journey mm -hmm. of like the hammer is really the first step right that's the first thing that you need to do before you can start doing all this other stuff and then painting a picture of like here are the things that you can do and empowering them as a creator mm -hmm. and like and, and so that's the question, if I'm selling hammers, right? I wanna understand, what are you building? Right. Right. Mm. Like, what is it, that, like, did you buy your first home and you're hanging pictures, mm. right? That's not even, like, that's not an advanced project. I'm not building a fucking house or anything, but right. it's like, okay, like, that is a really cool experience. You just bought your first home and you're now decorating it. You're making that space your own, da, 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 da. I'm 10 steps removed from the hammer, mm. right? The mm. hammer just enables that. Mm -hmm. Right, but that story is so much more powerful than hey, I have a hammer and it's built of high grade steel. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's very interesting. You brought that point up because the other day I was at my friend's house and uh, told me you're gonna meet him tomorrow night. Nice. And his girlfriend Michaela, she was drinking a marine collagen. Okay, right? a yep. collagen for, and she's like, oh my my instructor from hot yoga yep. told me to buy this collagen to drink it right after my workout. But we started got we we started talking yep. and we're like. You're not drinking the collagen. You're, you're, you're experiencing that yoga lifestyle. You're, exactly. you're participating in that lifestyle. And the collagen, it's just a product that fits in that lifestyle. Exactly, exactly. Um, and when she drinks that collagen, she's not thinking about, oh, it's gonna bend from her skin. It's like that yoga mindset. It's like yep. the overall lifestyle mindset. Yep. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's really awesome. So in terms of what you've done, maybe you can share with a little bit as much as you're comfortable in sharing. Yeah. Um, what are some things you've done for us as so far yeah. in about a month in? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I have a very kind of defined process after doing this as many, as many times as I have. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have basically finished the first stage of the process for, for Tom's project. And what that has involved is I've literally gotten on the phone and talked to 
you know, probably about a dozen customers. Right. How, how did you get on the phone? Because a lot of people will wonder about like, what do you mean you got on the phone? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Tom is fortunate in that he has, uh, you know, a little bit of an email list built up of people that, you know, have bought through, um, you yeah, know, website. By, through the, the Shopify site or, you know, um, just people that you, you've reached out. Again, this is where, you know, if you're not quite at that stage yet where you, maybe you're not on, you don't have a presence off Amazon, you haven't been able to collect those. Um, those emails, this is again where customer service can come in, where mm -hmm. you can kind of start building that list from people that reach out through those types of interactions, uh, you know, to your, your email that you have on your packaging or whatever. Um, but yeah, so we were able to, to get some people on the phone through that. Um, and then we were, uh, you know, we paired that with like a pretty large survey that we went out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have tens of thousands of customers. Um, and so, you know, we did a, a Facebook append and we basically marketed to those customers um, and, you know, offered some incentive and, and had them take a survey. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're at the point now where it's like, okay, we have all this data, right? We've had these com customer conversations. So we have that, you know, and the business qualitative data, right? It's the, the kind of words that they use and the tone of their voice and, and all that kind of stuff when they're answering those questions. We like to ask kind of like why and how type questions in those conversations. Mm -hmm. And then we get a sense of like kind of the what and how many when it comes to the surveys. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have that together and then it all kind of comes together in a, a workshop where we actually run through that and we make decisions based on that information where we say, okay, who, are, who the hell are we selling to? What do they care about? What's the role that we play? What are things that we can do you know, better that we can do more of, like what are the types of products that they want to see from us. So many things come out, and, and this is the thing that I probably can't stress enough, is that the best brands in the world give a shit about their customers, mm -hmm. right? It's like, okay, I don't care if you don't give a shit about beauty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But like you need to give a shit about your customer and you need to do things, everything needs to pass through the lens of like, how does this benefit my customer, right? How does this make my customer heroic? How does this make my customer able to do more of what they want to do to, to live this life that they want to do to tell this story about themselves to the world that they want to be able to tell mm. yeah absolutely so after that once we have the data um we are able to make real business decisions um, exactly. based on that data and yeah. i actually don't think it's going to be a easy process like i think some decisions we have to make are going to be it's going to be interesting for example one of the things that i thought today was one of our best selling products and you were saying that you know you need to raise your price yep. if you're going to be selling that off of amazon so it's like all right well we're really killing it on amazon with that product should we raise our price on amazon because you can't have two different prices one exactly. after that they, they got to yeah. be the same yeah so it's like well and so <laughs> and, and that's one of the things that you have to think about is like at, what are the goals of your business what are you trying to build right, right? it's like okay if you want to build revenue off amazon the that model is a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're trying to either sell into retail or sell through an influencer or affiliate audience, mm -hmm. right? It's like the both the retail store and the affiliate is gonna take a very large cut of what you're selling. So if you're selling something for 20 bucks, that's not really that attractive, right? right. They're, they're gonna get 10 bucks on that and then you're not gonna make anything, right? right? If you're selling something at 70 bucks, okay, they'll get their cut on the first sale, right? You'll get the, um, you'll still make a little bit of money on that first sale, but you acquire the customer, mm -hmm. right? Where that's the real, real thing is you are you are using them for cheaper cost of acquisition, mm -hmm. right? On the idea that you can then remarket products to them, that you can then upsell them, that you can then you know expand that lifetime value drastically, which is a thing that Amazon does not allow you to do. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's, I think it's important to think about the end goal, like what are we really trying to accomplish here? But in the past two years of selling on Amazon, I feel like we just been brainwashed by like, like It's a know, game, it's a game. Way, and when you know the rules of the game, it becomes very easy yeah. to just pull the levers. The right? only way that I think I know how to launch a product right now, it's like whenever I launch a new product, the first thing that comes to my mind is what? Giveaway. Giveaway, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna give this away for free. Not even and so then much. I'm going to like, in any other business, in you as a consumer, if I gave you something for free, would you come back and pay me, you know, 30 bucks for it? Yeah, you would devalue everything. Yeah, right you would devalue everything right off the bat, right? Yeah. And that is one of the things that fascinated me about Amazon. That was one of the first things that I learned about Amazon businesses was that they give shit away at the beginning. <laughs> and I'm like, no fucking way. Like, you've got to be kidding me. That's no, there is no <laughs> way. And then, and then you want that person to pay you later? Like, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe if you're offering like a, you know, the, there's, I think there's a good amount of data out there that in certain categories, if you give like a trial size, mm -hmm. right, for free, it's like a sample thing that they try it, decide they like it or something like that. But there's, there's some stuff behind that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, the, the model is, you know, give a bunch of stuff away for free. Trust that those people will never come back, but then a bunch of other people will find you because of that. Yeah. And then, you know, you sell to those people. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that's kind of a fucked up model, but it's like, it works for now. Yeah. And, and, you know, you can play that algorithm and all that kind of stuff. Well, I've been telling my audience, like lately I've been launching some products and I've definitely seen Amazon changing. Um, I think Amazon is definitely getting harder and Amazon's being smarter as well. Yep. Um, I remember when we first launched a few products, it was just a matter of using a giveaway service, maybe a Facebook ad here and there, and then slowly, surely you rank on page one. Not now that uh, a lot of sellers are more sophisticated because they're getting great information from people like me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, the, game is become, the game is definitely becoming harder. And I feel like now we're really at that cross point. It's like, yeah. you have a decision to make. Do you want to keep doing what you're doing? Um, or do you want to add another tool to your arsenal? And I, guys, like business, 101 like this is not even something that's crazy it's like business 101 know who your customers are yep shit that's like the most fundamental thing about business and we don't this is a problem guys like we don't know who our customers exactly. are exactly exactly think about it if you were had a retail shop like if you were selling the same shit that you're selling but you're doing it 50 years ago right you would have had to open up a store yeah right and you'd be selling all the same stuff but people would be coming in and out the door and you'd yeah. be talking to them every day and you get that kind of interaction of like, hey, I know exactly who's coming in. I know the type of people that are coming in, yeah. right? I know what they want. I can ask them in these these conversations and I can iterate and, and instead, you have access to the entire world of people. You have a hundred million people that are, have prime memberships, right? Yeah. That's who you're selling to. You just don't know anything about them, Yeah. right? And yeah. so you look at the same data that everyone else has access to and you say, okay, can I launch this product? Oh, okay, it looks like yeah. it's got the right numbers and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, on the algorithm front, you know, it's, it's interesting because like I, I kind of compare Amazon to where Google SEO was in like 2008, mm. where it's like, yeah, their, their natural language processor was like not up to date at all. You could just like keyword stuff the shit out of a bunch of blogs. Yeah. You could like in white text in the background, put your keywords like all over the place and get it yeah. ranked on page one of Google, you know, and then like no time flat. And now it takes six months of generating a lot of really good content to and getting cross link back and everything like that. And like that's where Amazon's going eventually is like that level of sophistication. It'll take a while to get there. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's more important ever than ever now to start thinking that, hey guys, like you're running an e-commerce business. A know? business, not playing the game, Yeah. right? You're not, you're not looking for mailbox money, you're not looking for short-term cash flow, right? Yeah. And if you are, that's great, and you can play that game and it'll work until it doesn't, right? Yeah. But if you want to build a business, if you want to build something that you can eventually sell, yeah. right? Like, no one's gonna buy a game. Right? Like, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing right now is like de-risking. Exactly. Like, Cause I like, I'm making good money on Amazon and yep. I could keep doing what I'm doing. But for me as a business owner, I have the responsibility of my business and like thinking about, okay, what am I seeing now? And what do I think this trend is going to be? And trust me, I talk to a shitload of sellers. Like if yep. there's anybody in this space, I would say I'm the top 5% when it comes to interacting with beginners, intermediate and advanced. Why? Because I have a YouTube channel, this Facebook group, and I go to events and I just talk to a lot of sellers. This is something I've been noticing quite a bit. It's like launching is getting harder, this is getting that. And I feel like the only solution to these problems is by building up a real fan base, by caring about your customers, by providing with them with a lot of value, yep. and then just have a thousand raving fans. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, Max, I. I so we're talking about this before, and maybe we can bring this offline later. Yeah. Um, I think, guys, I think this is extremely, extremely important. So Max, service is great Yeah. so far. It's awesome, and... Glad you think so. Yeah, I'm five star. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. five star. Yeah, yeah, five star, five star. For okay. sure, five star. And I didn't have to give you anything. <laughs> so he only works with selective business owners. Mm -hmm. You only take on a handful of clients at any given time, and you. I, I think I'm one of the smallest businesses that you worked with. I can yep. say that confidently, and we're doing seven figures. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna bring this offline because I don't want to put them on the spot. But I think it'll be really interesting to come out with something where you guys can get as an informational product or whatever. Uh, we're gonna talk about this later. But if people want to get a hold of you because they feel like they are qualified, 
um, yeah. and they have some marketing dollars, how can they find you? Um, for now, just shoot me an email at max at brandbuilderstrategy.com. Okay, cool. So max at brandbuilderstrategy.com. And like I said, it is a, uh, it's a three months commitment yep. and it is uh, quite, I, I hate the word expensive because like people think it's, oh, it's expensive, but it's like, it's valuable. Like, yeah, exactly. It's, it, like, you know, it's, it's, it's not cheap, of, yeah. <laughs> but there's, you know, there's a lot of value that comes out of it. And if, it, if any and you of don't you want, are, and you don't want this to be cheap. Yeah, I don't want it to be cheap. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna to talk to Tom about this. I do like working with earlier stage companies. It just doesn't always make sense to do my full process at that point, Yeah. right? So that's why I wanna come up with something that, you know, potentially might be better for where some of you guys are at. But if you got, if, if you think you're at that point, and I'm, I will always respond. Like, I, you reach out, if you have a question, if you have anything, just please email me and I will more, more than happy to answer your questions. And then, you know, if, if you wanna work on a project, if you wanna do engagement, we can figure out something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. like part of it, just to give you guys an idea, is three months, like he flew from Austin to Vancouver for a one day workshop with us. So it is very, very hands-on and he's been doing a lot of work on the back end and things like that. So I'm personally very excited to find out who my customers are tomorrow. That's right. That's right. After two years of running my business, <laughs> who are you? Who are these women and men that buy my product? So I'm very excited for that. So anyway, guys, I hope this was a very, very valuable video, audio, whatever you guys are listening from. Okay, guys, we're done over here, but we're gonna go on Facebook Live. And if you guys wanna join our Facebook group, I'm gonna link it down below because we do stuff like this all the time. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna link Max's information down below as well. And uh, catch you guys in the next video.